So I forgot to mention, this is a spoiler discussion, so if you have not seen Bad Batch Season 2, I would recommend you go watch that before you watch this, because we spoil the entire thing. Hello and welcome back to GoatCast, episode 10. We finally made it to double digits, and uh, today we're going to be talking about The Bad Batch Season 2. Uh, we talked about the first season, uh, we did that in like four videos, uh, kind of spread out, but this one we're just going to be talking about the whole Season 2 in one video because we're not we're not doing that again we're just gonna go through the whole season talk about it so yeah zach what did you think about Hi. bad batch season two uh i don't i don't have any like any feelings towards it honestly like it's just kind of kind of all right um last night you told me that the the last episode that i watched was the finale and i, I had no idea yeah I was just, just kind of watching it week by week. I, I feel like I had a lot of high spots and a lot of low spots, but other than that, I was just kind of, you know, enjoying it. Yeah. No, I I, uh, I liked this season quite a lot. Um, I think it had higher highs than lows, and overall, I think, was a good continuation of the show. Some dumb episodes, for sure, but season one had some dumb episodes. But the, the storyline that they have set up for The Bad Batch is intriguing. I do like a lot of the characters. Uh, I think this season made one character in particular better, in my eyes, mainly. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit with the main crew. I think we talked about the characters before, and I didn't really care for some of them, like Wrecker and Tech, I thought were lacking a little bit. And I think this season did a better job fleshing some of them out. Uh, yeah. Um, everybody had their, like, even the stuff that we got to see with Crosshairs, like, really fleshed him out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Any yeah, Anytime tech, Crosshairs tech showed up, a little love. it was, uh, you knew you were getting a good episode. That man is <laughs> yeah. the best part of that show. <laughs> Very quickly became the... the denominator of like is this going to be a good episode or not yeah and it's just shocking because i don't think there's a single bad episode with crosshair anytime he shows up it's a good uh, episode no no you're right you're right they're, they're, they're all so i'd get like it, he has like that really like cool theme it's very like synthy like reminds me of like blade runner like it's just yeah he's just such a highlight of the show i absolutely love him but anyway season season two kind of picks up with the Bad Batch continuing to be basically little mercenaries. Uh, they still are working with Sid, the Trando lady who, you know, gives them jobs. Uh, the first two episodes are just kind of, I don't know, it's just kind of reestablishing them working around. And we see Admiral Rampart figures out that they're still out and about, you know, because uh, he blew up Topoka City at the end of season one. And I guess he assumed, well, I, he, I guess he assumed the Bad Batch were dead. Crosshairs didn't tell them that they survived and he's trying to cover that up because they don't want any bit of the destruction of Topoka city being in public knowledge. And that was probably the most interesting thing from the first episode. Uh, there was uh, a clone uh, captain Wilco who, for whatever reason, I really liked. He's like this really by the books clone trooper who just wanted to bring in these traitor clones. And that was fun to watch. Yeah. He was, he was enjoyable. He was just kind of, yeah, you, you felt you know, bad for him because at one part, Wrecker like laughingly blows up a bunch of clones, and you see him looking over his dead troops, being like, "Oh, like no." Yeah, <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. Wrecker was just laughing as he blew that man up. <laughs> but it wasn't like a insane. Like I think season one had a better uh, pilot episode for sure with Order sixty six, and then uh, Crosshair is turning evil and all that, and kind of setting up the premise of the show. This one was just kind of more the same in yeah. a way. And like I said, kind of setting up the stuff with uh, Rampart. I was surprised because Rampart was such a big part of season one. And he didn't get a lot of fanfare in this season. Like, he got a decent amount. Um, you know, he, he just kept popping in now and then. Uh, we see him giving Crosshair a job with Commander Cody, which was, once again, the minute Crosshair showed up, we got a really good episode with this kind of <laughs> Clone Wars. And getting to see Cody again was nice. Yeah, I know I know Cody's uh, one of your favorite clones, design-wise and, like, character. So I'm sure you were happy to see him. Yeah, no, it, and like you said, it was very much like a Clone Wars episode. Like it was, it was. Yeah, it, they made Droidicas really scary. <laughs> <laughs> Those things would come, you hear them rolling in the distance and they'd all get like paranoid looking around like, oh, where's that thing? You know? Yeah. I, I really like the sound that's... design. That was fun. Like getting to see, because usually you see droidicas, it's like, oh, you know, Jedi just, you know, throws it off the roof or whatever. 
Yeah, but seeing clones like seeing like from the clones perspective is like it's fucking terrifying. Yeah, and the clones you hear got, them rolling around and you're like trying to figure out what doorway they're gonna pop out of. Yeah, and it's also like really close quarter combat. There's like all these stairways they have to fight up. Like the fight scenes in that were really fun to watch. Uh they had like flamethrowers and the droidicas and crosshairs is bouncing lasers off his little mirrors and it's like it was just really well put together and then um oh the coin yeah and then <laughs> you have the 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 separatist lady who's like explaining how you know the republic is just, just basically another republic the empire is you know bad like you know I, yeah. obviously we know that but we have a bit of a moment with Cody trying to like calm her down or have her surrender and then of course crosshairs just follows orders and it's just kind of like you're hitman basically where he just doesn't care and he kills her yeah which you know fits his character we're like okay he is just that far gone but at the same time when he talks to cody you can see that he's like i don't know re- not reconsidering but he I- he is conflicted still well i, I think he's he's still conf- like because we we left season one with crosshairs choosing the empire Mm-hmm. And he's he's trying to convince all of his brothers to join the empire as well. Yeah, and you know, I, from Crosshair's perspective, like it, he's still like anybody that opposes the empire is just as bad as like separatists. Like they they just don't like there is a good side and a bad side, and Crosshair believes that he's on the good side. Yeah. And he has to do dirty things to keep it that way. But you know, such as war. Mm-hmm. Um, then he's- we get into this. And with that episode, Cody having the the hard conversation, or I, I guess the harsh scene of, you know, uh, Crosshairs takes out the, I, I forget what her position was, but she was... So like the governor of the planet and, or and something a, like that? Yeah, like an opposition of some sort. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, that obviously affects Cody. At the end of the episode, they're like, you know, Cody's gone rogue. Like, he, he ran off. He, yeah. you know, disappeared or did something. Which I don't know how and I feel like about that because I, I I always but that, I think that was the point that like conflicted with Crosshair like yeah like why would why would he leave like we just did what we were supposed to do mm-hmm. why was that the part like did I do something bad like was that a- am I wrong yeah and then that kind of like grows throughout the season it is one of those things though where I I like the idea of some clones just being loyal to the Empire and the idea of having like Rex and Cody that used to be friends almost like butt heads would have been interesting to see yeah but people like the clones so much that i feel like making them out to be evil is just not possible like the idea of order 66 is it was against their will you know uh we we see later on in the season that there are some clones that are very loyal to the empire and do not care um there's like an assassin clone that's revealed and he has a line where he's like i'm a true believer you know and it's like oh, okay yeah so there's there are some clones out here that are very much gone you know they're far gone but yeah. it's like oh people like commander cody we can't make him evil so i i, I don't know uh but that was surprisingly that was like the, the only episode with him i thought cody would show back up but he didn't uh so i guess we'll have to wait till uh, next season to see if cody has any more i don't know point to the plot yeah uh, like we we got to introduce some to some other cl- we're gonna jump ahead a little bit here but you know Rex has accumulated a couple clones they're doing you know rebellious things yeah kind of uh, I, I was I was at the edge of my seat every time that they would show up like where's Cody like where's where's the helmet like, where's it at where's that where's that sexy helmet where's that visor um. <laughs> But that, but that, that third episode was really fun. There's even like crosshairs blowing up the tank and everything. It was just, it was a good oh, the classic tank was such action. A cool scene. You know, good, good Star Wars Clone Wars esque action episode. It was really enjoyable. Very much so. So that that was definitely a highlight right away. And then the next, like, uh, the <laughs> and next... then we got episode four. You want a challenge, Teo? <laughs> Yeah, the next the next like three episodes are all just kind of like bad batch goofy adventures. The next one is like the uh, it's a racing episode, and uh, Tech gets a little like a little love where he's gonna be the racer, and he's all you know uh, analytical that he's just like I don't need my weapons, I'll drop those, I'll go faster because I'll be lighter, all this different stuff, and ends up yeah. winning. And we get a little tease that like Sid is not a good person, which I feel like we've known since season one. We've always been talking about how she's a shitty person, and it's like they're starting to like yeah. the, there's this gangster guy who's like sid's gonna betray you like you should know that like he, he literally tells them like she's not a good person which i thought was kind of right. the, the only like tidbit from that episode that was really anything to take away from because it's just like a it's like death race pod race the, the only <laughs> the, the only really good part is the one guy that gets shot in the crowd and everyone just starts drinking like i i thought that was funny 
some random <laughs> some random bystander gets shot and everyone's like eh, anyway like yeah but the the guy that won the gamble against uh fuck what's her name Sid. Sid. Well, <laughs> the uh, the other gangster that like won the bet against Sid. When he says that she's going to betray them, like it's not it's not like a throwaway line. Like I feel like they did a really good job delivering that. Like it wasn't just like oh she's a shitty person. Like it's yeah. It's like, like when you when your back's like, against the wall. Sincerity. In like it. if your back's against the wall, don't expect her to be there for you. Like it's like you know right. Which was nice where i mean like i said i think we talked in season one where we were like she's just a shitty person and why the fuck do they keep working for her like she takes all the cut of the money they do all the work yeah so uh, building into that a little more i did like because i was like this feels like a natural progression that they're starting to become wise to the fact that like oh she's just kind of a bitch (laughs) so and then uh the, the the next episode is just an indiana jones knockoff with a fucking long long neck thing from horizon zero dawn and at the end it's just like it's so weird i don't i didn't like i was i think they even straight up use the like ark of the covenant theme when she's like solving the puzzle i swear that's the same music i could be wrong yeah it's like it was very similar yeah and the, if not the exact riff and like uh what's her name uh pow she starts with a p right i i can't like do you know her name let me I, i'll have to look it up okay look I, it up, I don't I don't, I don't remember her name <laughs> she's in a couple episodes <laughs> but she's just she's like sid 2.0 i guess where she's just nicer yeah. sid like oh come do jobs with me and she's a she's an adventurer like an indiana jones type you know it, there is oh uh, this is gonna take me a minute <laughs> it's not it's not listed here hang on i'll help you because I, I know the actress. I know that voice. Faye. You heard Faye? It's Faye. Faye? Faye. Faye? Okay. So Faye is this adventure. I don't even know what we were saying now. Anyway, she <laughs> she's like Sid 2.0. <laughs> that went on for so long. I was like, wait, where, where were we even? Yeah, I'm going to cut just, all I that. But I... for context, we just sat for like a minute trying to find her name. Cause <laughs> no, looking it up, it wouldn't tell you. Um, I, I, knew, I knew the actress. I just couldn't think of the character thing. Yeah, and they, they, the only highlight of that episode for me was she's like going on this little monologue and Hunter just tells her to shut up. This reminds me of the time I tracked down the Belmont diet. I don't care. <laughs> They're like stuck in this booby trap, yeah. you know, death trap. They get separated, and he's just, and she's just going on. And he's like, "Lady, I don't care. Like, just stop." Yeah, I, I mean, that might have been like the most filler. Oh yeah, because the, the next episode, the next episode's definitely filler as well. Uh, but it's 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 Mando season two esque, where we get a cameo focus, you know, of Gunji, the Padawan Wookie. Yeah, which you know, it's fun to see. Yeah. I like Gunji. Um, he should be dead though. There's too many Jedi surviving Order sixty six. But uh, the 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 Trandos, I always like the Trandos. They're they're fun to watch. You know, these like you know, they just they just hate like everything you know they want to skin people yeah. and burn trees and it's just like they're just evil and they have little flamethrower tanks and i was like oh this is fun yeah there's the <laughs> the 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 trando leader gets uh gets whacked off in a pretty fun way with like spiders and stuff <laughs> I thought it was pretty pretty gruesome. The, the, he's like getting pulled up in the ceiling for... and he's like screaming and I was like, Ugh. Yeah. The the animation of the little spiders just like walking through and bumping into trained oceans and they just fall over. Yeah. Like it you know, it it wasn't as bad as the, the treasure hunting episode, but it was still just kind of whatever. You know? Yeah. Very very basic. It was, it was very Which is okay. Very throwaway, but I'll like it, it was entertaining it's it's not one that you're going to be like thinking about after the fact too much right after that episode we get a we get a really nice two-parter with uh senator chuchi from clone wars which uh was definitely Chuchi. uh two episodes i liked quite a bit yeah no that was that was the great like the the whole like conspiracy thing mm-hmm. and, you know and even just like the idea of it's almost like post vietnam where it's like what do we do with our veterans basically type of like yeah where they're trying to like go for clone rights and things like that and she's trying to like pass bills because the clones it's basically a slave army they're they're property of the republic yeah and they don't know what to do with them like they're enforcing the empire now their facilities have been shut down obviously which plays into this whole episode where uh rampart was obviously ordered to destroy uh topoka city and that plays into palpatine's whole political angle trying to Uh, rush in these new uh, TK troopers and stormtroopers, but like we have, you know, Chuchi trying to figure this stuff out. We we see the clone bar again from uh, season six, I want to say, of Clone Wars. Yeah. Um, Can you see the clone bar again? It was really cool. 
Yeah, and like you've seen um, these clones figure out this, you know, conspiracy or like not a conspiracy. There was a clone who was a pilot, uh, or not a pilot, but he was on the bridge of the Venator that was destroying Topoka City. He was just following orders, and he's just like, it doesn't feel right, you know. No one's talking about this. Like they're saying it yeah. was destroyed by a storm. People need to know. Get told an to order to blow up your house, and then they say, oh, you know, a tornado took it out, and it's like. Nah. Hang on now. Like, there, there's yeah. a reason that we did this, and now, now you're lying to everybody. Like, and then seeing that, like, this, like the the one clone just got like a full beard. He's like disheveled. He's hanging over the bar. Yeah, Th- this two parter reminded me a lot of Devil's Deal from season one with Ryloth, where the yeah. first episode yeah. focused on the main crux of the problem, and then the second episode, the Bad Batch came in to solve the problem. Like, it was almost like yes. bit for bit. I think Devil's Deal was also like the midpoint of that season. I'm pretty sure. So it's interesting that they kind of did that again, uh, which is kind of nice. Yeah, it's like oh, that's cool. Because I, I like having stories focus on other parts of the universe where it's like, oh, Chuchi, I like her character. Let's see what she's up to. She's, you know, working with the clones. We see Captain Rex again. Like I, I said earlier, yeah, there's this like, clone back. sniper who's like, he has one of those like cyanide shock pills and kills himself. <laughs> which are just i love those those came in like i think mando season two all these like idea of like they have like a, a shock tooth so they can't get captured um well, we we saw them again in one of the later episodes didn't mm-hmm. we when yeah uh, there was that one with, with, officer. <laughs> yeah yeah with with fireball and uh i can't uh, think of the other clone? Yeah, it's fireball and something Oh, uh, it was Nemec. I'm Nemec. sorry. I think... <laughs> it's Nemec. Nemec thank you. Because yeah. I, I remember that because <laughs> Nemec is from Andor, and there's a Nemec clone. I think it's spelt different, but I'm like, that sounds the same. They're both called Nemec. There's Kid Nemec yeah. who talks to you about oppression and the, the you know, here's the definition of the word. And then there's clone Nemec who's just shooting people. They were, no, they were they were really fun episodes. Ian McDermott fucking had a great speech at the end as Palpatine. That was great. I love hearing his oh, voice. Yeah. And like yeah. immediately they like played into his hand, and I was like, ah. You, you almost knew that was going to happen. But then they totally get yeah. rid of Rampart, who was the main villain of season one. Like, he's just gone. Well, they had to make room for the new one. Yeah. I don't think he was established until... Maybe it was next episode. I'll have to think. I think it was. But anyway, these um, uh, th- 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 these two episodes were, were quite enjoyable. I, I, I liked them a lot. It's kind of sad because it's like they, they say that Rampart just wanted to blow up the Camino and the clones were so, you know, good at following orders that uh, that's a negative. And we want people who have, like, the ability to uh, make their own decisions. Which think is, for themselves. But and, is, the, yeah. is the real reason Palpatine wants to get rid of the clones is because they think for themselves and they have attachments to like the jedi and things like that and they're starting to question what they did so he wants to get rid of them so it's kind of funny that he's like they're so loyal but it's like that's the reason he wants to get rid of them because they are independent thinkers but i mean it's it's so bizarre like palpatine's the one that orchestrated the clones being a thing Mm -hmm. and and the way that they are yeah and i mean they were a means to an end yeah, but, but like before Clone Which Wars fleshed achieved. out the clones, it made more sense as this autonomous army that the Jedi just kind of worked with and then they turned on them at a you know drop of a hat. But then Clone Wars made them out to be so much more with like characters and personalities and their yeah. own belief system that now they almost had to retroactively work in the fact that it's like, okay, how do we deal with the clones leaving the, the bigger picture? I mean, uh, they do have the enhanced aging Mm-hmm. Like they're so all they gonna get, die, you know, you know. It's like they're all gonna die in the next like twenty years, but which is very sad. the The whole concept of clones a... is just like depressing because they are basically a child army because they're not that old. Oh and, yeah, like their no. only purpose is to fight. And even these clones in the show are just like, what are we gonna do now? And that was a conversation being had in Clone Wars, where it's like one day this war is gonna end, and then Rex is like, and then what? We're soldiers. What happens to us? And we're getting to see that. Yeah. it's depressing. It's like, oh yeah. no, my uh, boys. Yeah because it's a little little discerning like one hand like they're trying to like wing them out they're trying to you know bring in the troopers mm-hmm. and then it's like well, you know what do we do with them yeah because we even see it's... a bit of a uh, a cool visual at the end of the the cody episode where all the tk troopers are occupying the world while the clones are leaving yeah they're like they're, they're walking in opposite directions in, mm-hmm. in formation it's like you're being phased it, out your old your old material we don't need you anymore yeah it's just it's it's odd that they just just let them go like you've done your job you can go like you don't have to fight anymore but it's like well what, what do i do with my life like the entire purpose of me existing is to fight yeah which is very reminiscent You're saying that to the war real is world over. real world scenarios with uh, veterans coming home from war and not having yeah a purpose anymore and struggling to figure out what to do so i like that they're uh almost paralleling that in the star wars universe with 
clones in this whole plot, which is pretty cool yeah. to see. You know, Chuchu gives them at the, and the end of them. this two-parter, uh, Echo stays with Rex, which is kind of a big uh, plot point. Where it, just, it kind of comes oh, yeah. out of nowhere. It's like all of a sudden he's just like everyone's walking away, and they're like, "We'll see you later, Echo. Good luck." And Omega's looking at him like, "The fuck is happening? Like, wh- wh- huh?" <laughs> You know, yeah. like, and he's like, just like, you, what, I, I'm staying. And she's like, you didn't tell me. And she's very upset with him. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. You can't very leave. Upset. Which uh, plays plays into the next episode really nice, which is an episode I like a lot, where they go to this uh, mining operation for Sid, of course, and they, uh, their ship gets stolen and they get stuck in a mine. And Omega is just mad about everything because Echo left. And she's very like, she's trying to process this stuff and she's a kid. And she doesn't really get it. And then you have Tech, who is super analytical and very much yes. so not emotional. And he has to basically help her deal with that. And we get to get a bit of his own insight where he's a soldier and he's like, it's just part of the ebb and flow. Like, people leave. Yeah. And, like, I'm just so used to it. And, like, it was just, it was a really good scene. I liked it a lot. It really made me like Tech a lot. Like, him just explaining his own way of thinking and how he's mm-hmm. relating to her, being like, yes, I do understand that you have a harder time with this than I do. And I'm sorry if that, you know, my disassociation with it hurt you yeah. in any way. And it was, it yeah, was a just great little bank, episode. Having a it was fucking great. Them sitting at that little pool and then, you know, record yeah. hunter doing whatever the hell they're doing. You know, it was... <laughs> <laughs> great episode i loved it a lot and then uh the follow-up episode was fucking terrible i hated it <laughs> when they get their ship back Ooh. oh when they get the ship back and it was they're, they're, they're with all the little mining kids and there's the fat guy and it's like mining kids the, the he he's so incompetent he's he's he fell off the bridge himself no one even touched him like they didn't have to do anything to defeat the bad guy he swung his cane and fell <laughs> Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was very. Because I really I liked the episode bad, before was, that, you know, and then you get to this, and I'm like, "What? Even? Huh?" Yeah, they they, they get gonky bag. And I guess you know they're asking. This plays into the whole Sid thing. They're like, "Hey, Sid, we're stranded," and she's like, "I don't care. Like, hey, yeah. can you come help us?" She's like, "No." Did did they reach out to her? Yeah, when when they got to that little town, they got a message to her and. They're like, we need your oh, help. Oh, that's, that's right. And Sid's just that's like, right. I'll see what I can do. And, you know, she obviously just never did anything. There was there was one comment that I saw yeah. somewhere on Instagram. I was talking about Sid being the one that told the kid about where the ship was. Uh, I don't, that'd be weird. Like, Sid, Sid was trying to undermine them. That's why when they contacted her, she'd, like, just brushed <laughs> them off. So maybe she had, like, dealings with the, the fat guy? Yeah, she, yeah, she was trying to... To That'd be interesting, but I don't think point. they they established that. There, there was that nothing was... to support it. It no. was just like it's a neat idea. Here's my theory of what's going on. It's like uh, yeah, that's but... a bit of a stretch. That's interesting though. Um, like like she's actively trying to get rid of them at this point, and yeah, which seems a little like rushed because I felt like in you know at some points in season one they did have a bit of a thing, but then in this season they're really like no, she's just a piece of shit. Well, yeah, I mean it co- comes off to her like her personality, like what we were talking about with the 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 racing episode, like she she obviously has this shady past. Y- yeah, she's got like a like an addictive personality sort of thing where. She keeps putting herself in these situations. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, these guys, they're obviously hot items. You know, they're wanted by the Empire. They're defective clones. They, they, you know, they're, they're commandos. Like, they're, like, hot items. And she uses them to for personal gain mm-hmm. over and over and over again and like you know it, it comes down to like are they property or are they people and yeah and like, she I was definitely like, like oh i can use these guys to my own benefit especially in season one hundred percent and now it's kind of like uh they they want more and she doesn't want to give them more and she's like they're becoming almost too self-aware i need to disassociate myself with them but even so when uh they get their ship back they decide not to go back to her uh well no actually yeah. she gives them the mission in the next episode to go to the the crash site of the the ship uh that's a drift yeah. in space so they do take another job for her but basically she gets mad because they don't deliver and then she eventually yeah. you know backstabs them don't come back unless you scavenge something valuable what makes you think we'd come back at all don't test me bandana <laughs> the next episode is very very fan servicey for clone wars season two 
you know, because it's just straight up like I think about the point because I, I like the opening. It's like, oh, this is like alien, you know, or dead space. Yeah, it was very alien esque. It's like, oh, what is what is going on? I remember watching that episode with my mom and she looked at me like, yeah, when she heard like the crunching noises, she's just like, what are we watching? And I was just like, I don't know. <laughs> But, no, this uh, is this is one of the episodes that tries to tie in all the like like they're getting really big into into cloning, mm-hmm. like this is like this you know, new this, mysterious this villain station. Yeah, I think this is the episode um, he gets introduced. Uh, possibly. I know he's at the end. I think of it, you're right because he talks to Scorch. Yeah. Uh, but I think yeah. he was shown earlier. They're like, oh, one of the vessels went missing. He's like, find it. Because he's, he's, cool, he's got a cool. He's got a cool voice. I like his voice quite a bit. He's got a. Interesting. Yeah, he's very, um, very like wispy. Do you think he's got a mechanical hand, or does he have like a burn on his hand? He's always like grabbing his gloved hand. He's like rubbing it. So mm, he's he's gonna take it off, and he's got the the staff of raw headpiece burnt into his hand. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, cause like in one of the later episodes, he introduces like a toxin that like knocks out Crosshair. I think he's got like a fucked up hand. Obviously, it's scarred, messed up, somehow. mauled. But uh, I don't think he would be like like rubbing it if it was mechanical. But Zillow Beast, uh, Zillow Beast shows up, baby Zillow, and uh, baby I guess Zillow. I guess if it just eats electricity, it grows. Maybe this is like an enhanced breed because that was a little like, oh, it's it's huge. What happened? Like it was small a minute ago. Well, I mean, you know, on the on the on its natural planet, it probably doesn't get that much energy, right? Like, you know, hey, there's a thunderstorm. Let me go. Yeah, I can't remember. Eat lightning. Does it? I don't remember if in Clone Wars if it feeds off energy. I can't remember if that was a thing. I think it does, doesn't it? Like eats energy. The fuel from the planet is toxic to it, but I think it feeds off of energy or something like that. Yeah. I can't I mean, remember if that was. A I'm thing. sure they. I'm sure they did something. Because the electro bomb they dropped on the droids, like their atomic bomb, woke it up. Like, I mean, that was just yeah. The whole episode to play into Godzilla, basically, you know, atomic bomb and <laughs> all that. But seeing a Zillow again is cool because that was a plot point from season two that never got followed up on, where Palpatine wanted it cloned, and they really liked the enhanced armor because it's lightsaber proof. The idea that they did end up cloning it, and this weird scientist now has possession of it they have a bit of a creepy like uh black site type of thing going on where the clone commandos show up to uh take down the zillow beast and then they round up all the civilians in in the area and like yeah and they they i'm pretty them sure off. they they killed them <laughs> you know <laughs> and it's pretty dark it's like ooh. and uh the creators dave filoni and them are obviously tone deaf i don't think they've ever played republic commando because they have scorch doing this and scorch is the funny man and him being a shady black ops clone commando for this weird doctor just does not fit and i don't know what's going on there <laughs> and well, they're the, gonna the, kill my boy zach scorch is gonna fight the bad batch did and they ever say him. that it was scorch in this episode I, I the credits the in this episode the credits listed him as clone commando scorch oh no yeah so it is scorch <laughs> and it's like okay where's boss where's fixer fixer would yeah fit where's this. the rest of them? well fixer is like the weird follow orders guys because in uh, uh, spoilers for republic commando when Z- sev yeah. dies yeah. Fixer is like, hey, <laughs> fuck him. We're told to leave. I don't care. Like, if Fixer was there, makes sense for me. Because it's like, okay, he's very analytical. He's like, because uh, yeah. this is this is crazy. Yeah, but Scorch but... is the fan favorite, so they had to put him in. Well, yeah, but this is the crazy thing. Uh, the Republic Commando uh, Delta Squad are just the Bad Batch, but better. Uh, they're literally the same characters. <laughs> Scorch is They don't record. have a kid. They don't have a kid. And that's they probably they don't, they, don't, they don't fit the new Disney formula. There's no, no kid. Yeah, you gotta gotta protect the kid. But Scorch is basically like Wrecker. So having like a Wrecker type comedic character do this kind of stuff is like okay. They've obviously never played the game. They don't know <laughs> what this guy's supposed to act like. Well, you know, in season one, they introduced the the Order sixty six enhancement machine. Yeah, so they might have just like there's a fried Scorch's brain into the, being the, an obedient little the clone assassin from the conspiracy episodes. I think is a clone that's been enhanced by this doctor because he says he can use the clones. Later on, we learn that he wants he wants clones sent to his facility so he can experiment on them and give them a new purpose. Yes. So I'm assuming he's just like brainwashing them. Yeah, so Scorch, um, Scorch might be more of like a like a, a like a trophy at this point. Like he, he was Which very charismatic. He was very it makes me very sad. And they and you know he's he, gonna he he's gonna him. in season three they're gonna fight him and they're gonna kill him because he's been like this reoccurring uh, antagonist. Well, I don't know. We might never see him again. He might he might be off on a mission somewhere. And he we keeps never... showing up. Omega, look out! 
should have run away, dummy. Like, you know, he's in the finale. Like, we don't know where Cody is. We don't know where, like, you know, there's other characters that are just, we don't see ever again. Yeah. But anyway, uh, the next one. the next episode, uh, Outpost, is the best episode of the season by far. Uh, Absolutely. It is, once again, a crosshair episode, so it's immediately great, and it happened to be, like, it, it, it's such a wild ride. It's so good. It gave me, like, uh, Trespasser vibes from season one with the Talls on the snow planet. Yeah. And that, that's one of my favorite episodes of Clone Wars, and, like, Crosshair's in this Imperial officer that's very, like, just a just the most despicable, like, they made him so Nazi-esque. Like, <laughs> he's, they really did. He's blonde. He's all, like, he talks down to everyone, bright blue eyes, clean shaven. He, and he's like, you're out of uniform. And he puts a helmet on, and then he addresses him. And it's like, yeah, just like, just that piece of shit. Like, it's just like, who is it's, this? Yeah, it's very, like, a by-the-book sort of... You get the impression, like, he's just freshly out of oh, yeah. whatever he came out of. He, like, he's just pompous as all hell. He's, like, he has uh, his yeah. title, and he can be, you know, he's above everyone. And he wants to he climb do the ranks. whatever he wants. And they show up to this planet where uh, there's this uh, detachment of clone troopers uh, protecting, like, a warehouse, basically. And when you find them, they're, like holding their armor together with fucking wraps and cloth like and there's like three of them left you know we, we meet commander mayday who is just this grizzled vet who's just with his squad on this frozen just like, like i want to go home like they don't even have <laughs> they don't even have home. snow trooper armor they just have normal phase two armor and they're yeah. just wrapped in bandages it's just like what is this like <laughs> it's like thermal wrapping around He's just and there's like there's like whatever this they threat, can find there's like this threat of insurgents out there that have been attacking them and picking them off and it's just like ooh, what's going on what are they protecting and you know they get they get attacked there's a great great shot of crosshairs like thermal vision just blinding him and <laughs> yeah that was really that was really cool and he gets a shot off and then there's a legit blood trail like it's just very apparent blood across the snow and i was just like damn this is an animated show and it's got more balls than most shows that i see from like disney and star wars and stuff like that mayday and cross that goes to you know yeah asshole get the tells supplies them. that were stolen back yeah mayday's men are all dead into the weather yeah May mayday's men are all dead and he tells crosshair and mayday to go get the stolen goods so they they, they follow this blood trail down into a crack of the ice and they go through this cave they find the corpse and they're like they didn't even like they just left him here and cuss is like you know just dead weight and mayday has the the wonderful line of don't let me die on your watch yeah or remind me not to die on your watch mm -hmm. no point in carrying dead weight remind me not to die on your watch and then they you know go down the cave uh crosshair steps on a landmine it's pressure plated this is a great scene <laughs> and it's they so have, good they have this conversation where he's like he's got little uh little spikes and he's tacking the pressure plate down and he's like tell me about yourself <laughs> like we got we got time to spare and crosshair's like i don't i don't want to talk about this and he's just like give me something he's, he's to like, distract talk to me. me it keeps me focused yeah, <laughs> yeah. so they, they have a quick little like you know little heart breaking heart, the basically. ice moment yeah like, yeah like, tell me about your squad. And, then, and he's like, okay, you, you should be fine. And he says, don't move yet. Let me get around the corner. He's like, I'm confident, but I'm not stupid. It's such a good line. I, I, I love that so much. I'll wait around the bend. If I don't hear a boom, then I'll know it worked. That you're confident in your work. Oh, I'm confident. I'm just not stupid. And then there's a, there's a great Blue. little shootout and, you know, just tons of insurgents i don't know like if they were natives to the planet or what but they just like start pouring out of that like an anthill like <laughs> oh, yeah like 20 of them are running out the back it's like oh my word how many are there like and uh and then uh avalanche and then it caused the avalanche yeah i mean before the avalanche they see and... what they were guarding and it's just uh tk armor new stormtrooper stuff and it's like they've been out there in the cold with all this broken armor and they could have been using this stuff yeah they could have been using the the new the 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 old the you know the old guard had to you know suffer and die to protect our new shiny toys basically they have a avalanche mayday hits a rock very hard <laughs> and uh crosshair has a whole journey where he carries mayday back yeah for like two days which, he's just like which is carrying just so through knee perfect. high snow because you know we had the line earlier about dead weight and how crosshair has never cared about regular clones and this is such a good character arc and moment for this character of crosshair you know he's just like he's 
changing a lot of his like i don't know philosophy or like even just yeah. his morals like he's like i'm gonna carry this dying man all the way back and it has such a good payoff like you know he's begging that officer to save mayday's life and he's just such an asshole and he's just like no like he's gonna die we don't need him and he dies and crosshair has this moment and and draws on the the commander shoots him dead <laughs> so satisfying and then yeah it was it was one of the most i like, was so like if he doesn't it. kill this guy i'm gonna be so mad like i, I thought the <laughs> yeah. episode was gonna end with crosshairs just being like kneeling there and then the episode would end i was like he's, he's gotta kill this guy this guy needs he's got to die. And, and like <laughs> and the way that they did the they, they orchestrated it like the this the track that was behind that scene is so suspenseful and then it starts to like quiet down and i think the episode's gonna end and then he draws you just hear like command what was it a captain like captain the captain <laughs> turns around Bam. <laughs> Bam. And there's a great line that uh, mirrors mm. Clone Wars Season 1 where Mayday is a commander and this guy's a captain. And he's like yelling at him and telling him he's in charge. And he has the line like Rex with Ahsoka being like, uh, my oh, yeah. respect is earned. Like you don't just get respect from me. Like you have to earn my respect. Which, you know, mirrored the experience, you know, time all that stuff, you know. Yeah. Like I'm I'm but, more in charge than you, but I have more experience. It outranks you, you know, like Yeah. I've been it, here longer. I've, you know. But then uh that, that the, episode like, ends like, with crosshairs being... being taken to this uh remote black site with this evil doctor and you know, we're just kind of left on a little cliffhanger where he's been like she's like, "Oh, you're given a second chance here." And it's like, "Oh, is he going to become like a hit man for this guy now like what's like which i'm glad they don't they don't necessarily do uh because after this whole thing with mayday it's like crosshair has had a change of heart basically like he had his yeah he had his confrontation with the bad batch and said like this is my choice then he he had that question again with cody and then with this whole mayday thing has really like changed him like at a foundation like he's just like i am yeah I can't do this. Well, at, at this point, Hemlock, the evil doctor guy, mm-hmm. um, he he's trying to get the uh, Kaminoan doctor. Uh, I'm Nalase. Say Nalase. Uh, trying to get her to Cooperate. do something with the cloning technology. Mm-hmm. We don't know what it is. Ex- I mean, we have a pretty good idea of what it is, but... All these stuff is trying is to tie into the sequel movies. Said yet. So. <laughs> How do we clone Palpatine? This. Somehow Palpatine returned. But, you know, they're trying to figure out how to convince her to do it. Mm-hmm. And his assistant, the... I don't, does she have a name? I don't know it. She's just there. Yeah. There's this girl with red glasses, um, basically. She's like an assistant. I don't know if she he, has a he, name. He tells her that, you know, she's very fond of a young cl- clone. And they had, you know, at it being Omega. Yeah. So at, at that point, I think that they know... They're trying to use Crosshair to get to them. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think that they were going to use him as a they extra wanted, assassin. They, they, were they were thinking, were if like, he's going to... He knows how the Bad Batch thinks. Tell me where they would be. You know? Yeah. But uh, briefly touch on the uh, episode after that, which is just like, hey, don't build a city next to the water, uh, because tsunamis <laughs> are a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, but they they get more into uh, f- everybody's character. Is it f- the, we they, said they... it? Is it Faye? Faya? No, Faye. Yeah, it's Faye. Faye, Faye gets a little uh, hubby bubby with uh, Tech, which was kind of fun to see. There's a, there's a fun line where she's like, "Hey, brown eyes," and he's like, he's like, "Oh, we all have the same eye pigmentation, so there's no difference between our eyes." Like. <laughs> <laughs> but she's like obviously flirting with him and he's just like not aware yeah he's so analytical and like just you know soldier brain and he's just like not picking up the hint at all um i, I feel like in this episode he's starting to because like she started the whole brown eyes thing mm-hmm. way back in what episode five i think it was episode one and now they're they're doing a was it episode oh yeah because yeah, she was right. in the room with sid in episode one and she kind of like she's in episode one comments. five and then 13 yeah but uh it's it's but it's a bit of a point, throwaway he's, he's episode on to it. it was just like hey why don't we settle down here and they needed something to happen so they're like tsunami i i don't i don't think this one is as throwaway as some of the other ones i feel like this this plays yeah. into a bigger part of like they have a they have a place to go they don't have to go to sit doing this yeah hunting thing they don't have to go to sit like they can stay here they can you know they can help out with the city they can they can live here mm-hmm. like they can settle down and and put everything oh it definitely has a, it has a point them. for sure 
There's a point to it, but I mean, and just like I, I, I think there's a big, that's a big option for them. I think my I, confu- not confusion, but disappointment with the episode is that they have to have something dramatic, so they just have a tsunami, which I guess plays into like why they stay. They're like, we can help fix the place, so there's a reason oh, yeah, for them yeah. to stay. You know, they come up with a reason. Yeah. Uh, so I guess that's kind of what why they did that. But at the same time, it just felt like, all right, enough of people just hanging out and having a good time. We need something to happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not bad. You know, I didn't hate it. No, it's not bad. It's, you know, it's suspenseful. It's, you know, they're, like, gonna, they're gonna, you know, have something. I mean, obviously nobody's gonna, gonna die. No. You know, it's, it's... <laughs> well, that's it's, what I mean. It's too, it's too much of, like, a happy place. And, like I said, they needed to have some kind of action. But then they didn't want it to be super, like, um, impactful either. So they had to, like, hit this middle ground where it's suspenseful, but also, like, you know everyone's fine. Yeah. Because even, like, uh, Omega and her new friend, they're, like, running on the beach because the water's coming, and Hunter's got to go pick them up, you know? And it's like, obviously, they're not going to die. It'd be pretty dark if uh, Omega's friend gets swept away, you know? <laughs> like, it's, <laughs> it's like, they're not going to kill the kids. They're going to be fine. Um, but it was all right. The The, the next episode was pretty cool. It, it had an opening with this, uh, we talked about him a little bit, uh, this other posh imperial officer and they're transporting uh hauser we get to see hauser again which was nice to see and uh you know echo shows up with a uh a motley little crew oh yeah it was it was it was really you know they come in on that i don't know what that ship is i have no idea it looks a little weird but it's like splits in half cool yeah it was it was cool that you know they do a normal dock everybody gets ready for the dock and they've already snuck in they you know blew a hole through the side of the ship yeah they're they, still you know, using stunts for through. some reason yeah this I, I wanted to touch on that at some point because more inconsistent than season one when it comes to this yeah use of stun and not stun because this season one, they they just use stun, and in this every once in a while they 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 use a blaster. Well, that's not true. Season one had some weird inconsistencies where like Crosshairs ca- encounters them in the shipyard, and they're just shooting clones left and right. And then the next episode, they're y'all using stun. So yeah, you're right. But like yeah. now we get like in episodes they'll use stun, and then the next scene they're not using stun, and then they're using stun, yeah. and, and it's just very and it's like at this point, especially with like they're rescuing Hauser and these guys from these you know these clone prisoners are being transported somewhere where they don't come back from, and it's like and they're still using stun blast, and I guess you know there's they're mainly fighting TK troopers, and there's a couple clone commandos here and there, but yeah. it's like it's not like they're trying not to kill their brothers now. It's like these are basically their enemies. It's like why aren't you just shooting them? Well, I don't. I don't, know, I don't know if they took any for questioning or you know that sort of thing but they, they definitely got up to the to, to the officer and was going to take him in yeah is uh, it uh i think it's fireball right no is it nemec might have been nemec he's like approaching him and he's just like he's like <laughs> let's get the info out of you <laughs> crunch on a molar and just zaps the shit out of him well i guess we'll have to get that intel out of you No, they, they set up, Smoking like, eyes, huh? uh, Echo only got a bit of the info that they were deleting. Only knows one guy that can decode this. and it's, one, you know, one guy in the whole galaxy. It's like, it's got to be tech. So they, they, they fly back to, what is it, Pabu? Is Pabu, little island? yeah. So they fly to Pabu, and then <laughs> Omega is doing flight training. Yeah, and everybody, <laughs> Everybody's very cautious. Yeah, it was a great shot. Of she's, like, got this, you know, big old smile, and you see, like, uh, Tech hugging the seat. <laughs> he's yeah. grabbing it, looking over his eye. Like, like, know, he's, like yeah. he's very, like, stone-faced about it, but he's, yeah. like, definitely, like, bracing for the worst-case scenario. Yeah. And she's but, obviously, you know, Echo obviously very flies happy. in on the ship, uh, and he, he, like, you know, radios in. He's like, oh, you know, keeping up with training. And then they, like, you know, race into the landing zone. And, you know, Echo pulls in, and he lands the ship real nice. And then <laughs> Omega comes in and Crunches almost, like, lands it, yeah. on a group of people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everybody's like, like scrambling to clean well, this, this community is so like upbeat and perfectly happy and i'm thinking like i feel like they'd be like oh this these guys are kind of dangerous like why are we having them here like, of, yeah but uh a scene before that we saw crosshair try to leave his imprisonment because uh hemlock hemlock okay i gotta think of that yeah, so a- Hem- hemlock wants to know where the bad batch Toxic are plant. so he starts torturing crosshair with uh, one of those little dr ball droids needle yeah and Crosshair uh, gets a hold of a gun and does not hesitate to shoot uh, TK Trooper right in the face. 
Oh yeah. It just... <laughs> you were talking about people using stun and not stun. Crosshair never has a setting for stun, I guess. He is just straight no. up like <laughs> no. you are getting a blaster bolt. You're dead. <laughs> but it was cool to see that I, I, he I actually like tries it's... to he tries to warn them. He's like, yeah, he, hey, he goes they're after you. To a comms array. He goes to their one of their secret frequencies mm -hmm. and spouts out uh, what are the, some one of the numbers mission plans. Yeah. And you know, Eck, I guess has been like cycling through them for whatever reason, mm -hmm. and came across the the message. Well, if it's their own frequency, um, it's probably like you know it hasn't been used in a while, so it'd probably be like, oh, what the hell? You know, someone sent me something. Yeah, but I feel like that would be something that you would have to like manually look into. You wouldn't just get like a notification on your phone, you know? Yeah, but it is weird like... though because they they want to find out where this black site is, and if Crosshair sent them a radio wave, couldn't they trace it? I mean, if it's a black site, then they probably you know it's well, just the fact that he even got the signal around i don't know it's just like, like well, he, yeah. was, he was able to get it to them and the fact that that doesn't give them enough i mean obviously for plot reasons they can't just be like oh there he is um yeah but they well, uh, I, feel, I feel like if that was the case and they could do the same thing where like they could track where the signal went mm -hmm. and just have an armada fly over pabu and pick up omega but they they want to find Hemlock because Hemlock is uh, th these clones are being transported to this guy and they're not returning and then they learn that Crosshair is also there and... and they're like okay we're gonna help out Echo because you know he's our he's our boy and we they they do feel for the clones a little bit and they are I do like that they're straight up like Crosshairs could be lying to us like we don't know like he's done it before oh yeah they're not just like we gotta go help him he's got a change of heart they don't know that yet for all they know he could be l luring them into a trap but they go he to yeah. uh, Grand Moff Tarkin's homeworld to put a beacon on Hemlock's ship to figure out where he's going. And we get a pretty fun little uh, adventure with some, uh, like, some, like a ski lift, basically. That's, like, <laughs> going across the, the canyon on a cable car. And then once again, like, they get off the cable car, gun down some TK troopers, and then when they get the hangar, they use stun on the, the engineers. And it's like, make up your minds. Are you shooting people or you're not? Then uh, we, we get some... Tarkin's little meeting has some some familiar faces. Uh, Krennic there from <laughs> Rogue One. I don't think they got him in to do new voice lines. I think they just reused like lines from Rogue One because he barely talks. He's they're like, "What yeah, do you he, think, this di Director like Krennic?" Things. And then they'll like pan away from him so you don't hear him. And then he'll be like, "Yes, yeah, Governor mm -hmm. Tarkin." Like, you know, it's just like not many lines for him to. I, I thought have. Like they did a good job like animating him, but yeah, he looked good. And then uh, I didn't catch this uh, my first viewing, but the the one Imperial officer who's just like, "Have the clones uh, like you know gave you consent to do these experiments on them?" He is the same uh, ship uh, admiral who was with. Uh, Plo Koon and Commander Wolf when they save the the Turkarudas from the uh, Zagirians when he flies the ship underneath. Oh. He's that uh, Asian commander who's just like, they, they park their cruiser right underneath the Zagirian slave building. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the same guy, which I didn't recognize until I saw a post. I was like, oh, that's cool. I like that. Because he's like, I serve with okay. the clones. He's just like, have they consented to this? Like, this doesn't sound right. <laughs> You know? <laughs> yeah. And Hemlock's being all weird, walking around the, the, the conference room and putting his hand on people's chairs and being like, I have plans. And it's just like, who is this? Like, I feel like he, they'd be like, sit down. What are you doing? Like, yeah. Like, you're late anyway, and now you're acting all creepy. You think we're going to give you funding? Act yeah, I, I feel like Tarkin would have shut him down real quick. Yeah, just but... be like, dude, sit down. Like, you're in my house. Stop walking around. Stop being weird. Omega plants the, uh, the meat thermometer on the, the bottom of the landing gear. I thought the thing looked like a... <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just got a little spike. Tech and Hunter realize that there's security cameras offline and they, they run into a familiar face. Yeah, I I had some issues with that. Like, you very obviously see that there's something going on. Mm -hmm. Like, somebody else is sabotaging stuff and doing a worse job than you are. <laughs> Yeah. Like, just call it off. Like, this is not going to work. Like, like there's too many variables. Get what you need to get done and get out. But they're like, we gotta go investigate. Like, that's No, please don't do that. Yeah, I they was do, thinking in my head it was gonna be, like, Scorch, like, hunting them or something with commandos. But then it ended up being, you know, fucking Saw Gerrera, just like, hey, I'm here. Which, you which, know, was like, like bad place, bad time type of thing, where like they just happened to oh, yeah. be all doing their same thing at the same time. So I kind of like that. Saw Gerrera has become <laughs> this very like interesting character for me he's in everything he is the cameo he's man. in everything he's <laughs> but and it's it's like it's cool to see his like like he's he's become 
as much Star Wars as like Anakin at this point. Like he's in everything. Yeah, no, he. And you get to see his. You get to see his story and his whole like his mission. Like he's he's very. I don't even know what to even call it. He's an extremist. He he yeah, is, and it, it's. Which is an interesting angle because he he's a character that I've never really cared for. But over time and seeing more and more of him, it's like he is interesting because he is so like he's such a loose cannon. He's just like, yeah, he, I'm going to do never everything and do. anything to do what I deem as right. And even that, and he, he's like he's, he's, you know, screwing over the Bad Batch and blowing up the facility. He doesn't even like, oh, are they out of there? He's like, no, just detonate the bombs. Fuck them. You know? Yeah, it's it, he came in to complete a goal and he's going to complete the goal yeah you know they try to reason with him like we need more information on one of the officers like it's, you know that's why we like we got to figure out where this is and he goes oh, it's already set in motion like <laughs> like too bad i'm not i'm not changing my plans for you like <laughs> there are there are no breaks on the train like i can't help you everybody fights their way out Saul Guerrero and his men get on a and women yep get on a get on a ship and they get the fuck out i was really hoping that they would have taken the ship with the track i thought that's what was going to happen to be honest i thought they were going to take the tracker ship but regardless if they took it or not you know the tracker didn't work because uh, they blew up the shuttle and they blew it up well i mean if, if they if they would have taken that one have, having that sort of interaction like they they go to break <laughs> crosshairs out and they just storm sagreras yeah facility <laughs> But they, they tried to but, escape um, on the same cable car they came in. And because of the facility malfunctioning, they basically became sitting ducks because the power went out. Yeah. And uh, we get a, they, uh, a very well done death, uh, which I the, was not expecting. For the first time. Yeah. Very Clone Wars feeling where it's like, nope, someone is going to die. And uh, at some point in this season, oh, we were getting all this characterization for tech. And I even thought to myself, are they going to kill him? So when this happened, I was just like, oh, they're actually going to kill him because tech, you know, attempts to get the, the rail car running. They're in a terrible situation with uh, stormtroopers shooting at them and air fighters coming in. Which yeah, no, um, they got a, these a, yeah. these A wings or not A wings these V wings come in. I do like the little the little bit where Hunter's like incoming fighters and no one sees them yet. But I'm assuming yeah, they're yeah. Li- like it's it's his electro ability where he can sense things. Like he knows they're coming. Everyone's like where? Yeah. Like <laughs> he knows. Like there was like, there was a couple of times where that happened in, yeah. in this season. Where but that like, was so much more him subtle like, than him just like grabbing dirt and being like, "There's a base. Have fifty clicks." You know, it's like yeah. Like, I preferred that a lot more of just being like, he's just got this aware senses that he's just like, oh, this fucking starfighter's coming. We need to get out of here. But uh, there's there's been a lot of that where, like, he, he'll get the thousand yard stare and then be like, everybody will look at him and be like, what's like, what what is it? Mm-hmm. Tech's overriding the system to get the cable car running. They're getting gunned down on. The ships are firing on them. The cable car is falling apart. Crosshair gets stuck on one side of the cable car that's fallen off. Everybody's trying to figure out how to get him onto the cable car so they can get out. And he, once again, being like very statistic character, he's like, you need to sever the connection because the car will not move. If you come out here, it's too much fall. dead weight. Like yeah. he's just being very, you know, uh, factual. He's like, this, this is what you need yeah. to do. And Wrecker is very much uh, more emotional, and he's like, no. He's, he's like holding the cable car together at one point. He's like trying to pull it. Hunter's telling him, you know, he's ordering them to get in, and then uh, Tech has the great line, you know, when have we ever followed orders? And it's just... When have we ever followed orders? And it was just like, oh man, like... When have we ever followed orders? And then the the music, the the sound design, like him falling, it was all really well done. And then you know we get Omega's like uh, first person view, and just like it was like oh wow, they really they they went out swinging for that. It was appropriate in terms of its dramatic weight. Like it was well done with his yeah. death, and I hope he stays dead. If he comes back, I'm gonna be very mad. He better be dead. Yeah, I don't know. Because uh, like some, like, some people like are if, like, oh, if... Hemlock has his goggles, so he's probably found him. And I was like, that'd be so stupid. That would take away all the emotion behind that death scene of him, you know, sacrificing himself to save yeah. everyone. Because like I said, it was I really well like done. If anybody would come up with some crazy, quirky way to like survive that fall, he would he, he would be the one to like... Yeah, but I don't oh, want that. Because it's like, we already <laughs> had... Like, Echo is already a character who should be dead and is not. And it's like, I don't need another one 
of like, you know, like, you know, yeah. Echo blew up and he's still around. Tech fell very high up. He's dead. Like, he should be dead. <laughs> There's no yeah. reason he should be alive. But I thought that was a really good, like, death scene. It really, you know, it caught, it made me feel something. I had the feels. I was like, aw. Yeah, no. Like, it, it, it was really odd because, like, you and me both agreed that in season one, like, I couldn't care Tech less. was one of the more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was, he was, he was annoying at best. Yeah. And then, and then throughout this season, it was like, all right, Tech's getting, like, you know, he had the emotional scene with Omega, uh, Omega and... on the, on the lake. Um, Just more talking scenes in general. We get to see a bit of his, yeah, you know, more personal side than being just like yeah here's the exact way we're gonna fix our problem like that's that's just what he was in season one he was just a yeah he'd spew off the the problem like he'd solve the problem he'd Prob- just be probability like, yeah and then this, this is very unlikely and like, this oh, he was just okay. more of a, a character which i appreciated yeah and it's like when season three if they start characterizing wrecker he's gonna die like it's like <laughs> that's the, that's the telltale <laughs> sign now it's like the minute they start focusing on someone they're dead what just don't ever get a love interest in a show is is what happens yeah i wonder how that's gonna continue because it's like they were obviously hinting that she wanted, you know, to, you she know, had, you know, interest. The in last him. thing that she said to him was like, don't go run off with another bounty hunter. And he goes, well, that's very unlikely. And she's yeah. like, you, you're missing the point. <laughs> which, which is kind of my concern where it's like, okay, she's still around. Are they going to bring him back so he can get together with her? Because that storyline just kind of like is now just dropped where it's like, he's just dead. And it's like, she's. No, that was the entire point of face character. Yeah. Which. Is okay. I didn't mind giving Tech a bit of a love interest because once again, season one, he was just kind of a blank, like, I am analytical man. I will give you statistics. He's like less funny C-3PO. Or he's like the probability yeah. of this. Like, it's like, that's all he was. And in this, he had more yeah. to do, which I appreciated. And then uh, but- the, the last episode is pretty, pre- it was pretty, pretty quick, actually. It felt like <laughs> it's just yeah. like... It's like, oh, we we got away from that situation. Uh, Sid's a bitch and she sold us out and Omega gets caught. And the season ends with how do we get her back? You know. Yeah, there, and, there was a, there was a really interesting point where like Echo stayed with the ship. Everybody else gets captured. Wreckers in like a neck brace. Hunters all wrapped up. Like they're yeah. they're both in cuffs, being walked out. Everybody's been. Omega injured. has a standoff. Scorch captures her, and then Echo comes rumbling in, and then like a a walker. Are, are those are those Estes? ATSTs? They, uh, like, they got like, a different name, but they're basically beta like versions. A, yeah, they're betas of. ATSDs. They have they have a name. I think they're, they're in Star Wars Rebels. But um. But you know they're just like stomping in, and it's like is, is Echo. It's like it has to be Echo. <laughs> Surprisingly, like out of all the Star Wars projects right now, I'm most excited for the continuation of this show. Out of most things, because I'm like the, we got this clone uprising plot going on. This you know story arc this ramping up. Uh, Crosshair is at, at like, this I, facility. I need to see that. Yeah, Crosshair is now with Omega at this facility, so they're probably going to like have to team up. The The Bad Batch don't know where she is, so I hope for Season 3 that they are absolutely ruthless in terms of trying to find her. Like, I want to see the stuns go away, and I want to see them be like yeah. super, like, we need to find her ASAP. Like, you know, Hunter Hunter coming back to being Hunter. Yeah, like, they, we this, the season three, season 3 should start with them finding Sid and dealing with her, like, immediately. It should show how, like, much of a commando unit they are, like, like they find her like quick, you know. <laughs> like they're just like. But, I mean, they never left. Like side but... side with Sid. Like ha- seeing that interrogation and then them going, fucking doorstop to doorstop with you know Wrecker, Hunter, Echo. Yeah. And I mean, even you know. I'm I'm hoping Rex and. I'm hoping the next season will be the last because I don't know how much more of a story you can get out of this, and I feel like for the most part it's been very consistent, and I think we could have a very nice beginning middle and end type thing going on here with three seasons a nice little trilogy because this is like the low yeah. point of like your story where your character's at the lowest point and then you have your climax which will be season three i i, I want to agree with you but there would have to be because bad would batch have to has be not even, been getting a lot of marketing yeah. from disney and whatnot so i don't know how much more of it they want to like try to get out of it you know what i'm trying to say that they haven't been pushing bad batch yeah. like other things so i don't know if like because i i like having short and sweet and i like having conclusions and i hope that they have something planned and they don't just try to stretch this out yeah there's been nothing confirmed that the next season will be the last but i would personally like that if they did wrap up this story 
This is just the, <laughs> I explained this to you a little bit. I think it'd be very fitting if most of the Bad Batch end up dying and then Crosshair is left to take care of Omega because he wanted nothing to do with her and now he's had this change of heart and it'd be very fitting that like he has to be her guardian and I, I just think that'd be very like a cool ending in a way. Yeah. So I, I am pretty excited for the continuation of this show, which is funny because I remember when the show was announced, I was like, who really cares? <laughs> yeah. It, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm worried. Cause there's so, cause I like, I, I want to see the clone rebellion. I want to see that. I want to see yeah. the bad batch kicking in doors and trying to find Omega. And then they've got all these, like they'd have to deal with Sid, you know, the whole, like, you know, they could do a, Chuchi thing up to the rebellion. I don't think they have that many loose threads if that's what you're worried about. I think they can tie all that in pretty well. Yeah. Because it's not like there's really anything that's just like left out in the open. Because even like uh, the bounty hunters looking for Omega in season one was kind of uh, put to this. It's not even a thing in this season, which makes sense because the Kaminoans were taken out of the picture and now there's this new antagonist. Yeah. So it's like, it's not even like yeah. look back and be like, oh, they didn't wrap that up. It's like, no, that naturally wouldn't be continuing because of this and this. I, I just, you know, they, they have to do their, you know, their filler episodes. They've got to do this. They've got to do that. It's just like, I don't, I don't. I, I mean, ideally you don't do filler at all because some people like the, the like, oh, there's a episode quota. So they have to like make up an episode to fit in time. I always find that to be I mean, a but weird you have to have excuse. Different writers and different... It's just like, yeah. you, you could... You can figure it out. So it'd, it'd be nice if season three is all killer, no filler, you know, balls to the walls. Be nice to see. I, yeah, I, that's, the, that's the only way that I could see them doing it without having to do like a season four. Mm -hmm. And that's or what like I'm a cameo show. I'd, I'd like season three like, to really like yeah. try to wrap up this story. And I could be totally wrong, but I think that would be very fitting and have a nice little show. Because like I said, Bad Batch didn't really have too much of an interest. It's been consistently pretty good. It's, you know, it does have its misses, but overall, like its high points are really good, you know? Oh, yeah. And like I said, my favorite episode this season was probably uh, The Outpost with Mayday. That one was just such a ride. Oh, yeah. It's so good. Yeah, I... I definitely think, you know, it's worth a watch, especially if you're a fan of, you know, Star Wars animated stuff. It's more of that Clone Wars <laughs> terms of storytelling, like maturity. It's not Rebels or anything like that. You know, if you're an older fan, like you can definitely get, you know, something out of it. Uh, yeah, easy. And like, you know, some of the more goofy, like kitty episodes, you could just probably skip. You know, it's like, it's not going to hurt anything. <laughs> They're pretty good that way where like if you don't watch some of the filler stuff, it doesn't really affect your viewing, you know? You can just kind of skip that stuff. Right. Unlike some other shows where it's like, oh, that that one part in that filler episode that you didn't watch, that came into play later. And it's like, no. But yeah, what would you what would you say uh, overall, season two? Would you would you recommend it? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, especially if you saw season one mm -hmm. or you were a fan of Clone Wars. Like, there's no reason that you wouldn't watch it. Well, I mean, you could be like me where Star Wars Rebels is a sequel show to Clone Wars and then you start watching it and you realize it's a stupid, dumb baby show that's made for seven-year-olds yeah but granted this is also a cartoon made for children but uh it's a little more entertaining than rebels <laughs> so uh, yeah i have a little more like affinity towards it being like yeah you should watch it it's good no it's, it's good i will say the the music like i said very blade runner-esque i like that a lot especially with crosshairs yeah, and any, any of the, like especially with crosshair theme any of the the shady imperial stuff you get a lot of the cool theme that way that that theme was used very heavily like that synthy type music for the finale for season seven and i like that they continued that in the bad batch because you still have like the triumphant you know main bad batch theme that's yeah. more like reminiscent of like clone wars and then anytime you get into this shady stuff it gets really like this cool lingering theme that's just really well used droning i guess is the word i wanted to use <laughs> anything else you want to talk about with bad batch season two no no, no that's that's it I... that's it there ain't no more watch i mean not until the next season I guess. okay see you later Goodbye. <laughs>